Hey there, I'm Christina Johnson, a certified transformational nutrition coach and the owner of Christina Johnson Wellness. And I have been working today on putting the finishing touches on a blog post that I'll probably post in here tomorrow. But while it's all fresh in my mind, I just wanted to talk with you a little bit about two words that I really believe will make you eight times more likely to be able to resist temptation. And I know that might sound like some kind of sensational headline, but there's actually, as I'll be telling you in a little bit, some research that backs this up. And I know it from my own experience as well. So I'm really excited to share this with you and hope that it will be helpful for you in being able to stick with your healthy eating habits. So what I realized, looking back now on the years when I was a dieter, and I've shared this before, but I tried lots of different diets. And as I look back on it, what I realized is that whenever I was doing those diets, I would get offered food, you know, somebody would offer me pizza or I'd go into the teacher's lounge at school and there'd be a box of donuts. And my first response was always, oh, I can't have that. I can't eat pizza, it's not on my diet. I can't have donuts, that'll be too many points and I'll go over my points for the day. Whatever it was, my thought was always, I can't have that because the diet won't let me. And I will tell you, you know, I am a person who if I'm going to follow a diet, I'm going to follow it to a T. I'm going to follow every rule. I'm going to do exactly what it says. But the problem was that I just ended up feeling like I had no control. All the control of whatever whatever I could and could not eat was given to the diet. And so I just ended up feeling frustrated. I'd feel deprived because I had, you know, these foods that I wanted to eat, but I can't eat them because it's not on the diet plan. And so it made it really hard to stick with anything. And you know, there's always that part of you too that just wants to rebel. If you're told you can't have something, well, you're more likely to want it. I mean, psychologists have proven that with cravings. And so I'm curious, can any of you relate to this? Have you ever, if you look back, can you recognize that you've ever told yourself, I can't have that because it's not on the diet or I can't eat that because you know I'm not supposed to? If you can relate at all, will you just put yes in the comments? Um, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only person who's ever done this to themselves and I think it's a pretty common phenomenon. So I'd like to hear if you can relate to this at all. So. You know, what ended up happening though, is that once I stopped dieting and I just took the approach that I have now, and the approach I have now is to view food as nourishment and fuel for my body. So I don't eat based on how many calories I can eat, but I base my decisions on, you know, what kind of nutrients this food will provide me. And so that usually ends up meaning eating a lot of real whole foods and very little processed foods and refined sugars. And so, Looking back now, I didn't know this at the time, but what I can see is that once I started this approach of just eating real food and eating foods that would fuel my body, I stopped thinking I can't have this or I can't have that because there was no more diet telling me what I can and cannot eat. Instead, what I was doing was educating myself. I was learning, okay, these are the nutrients in this food. This is why it's good for my body. And I was also learning what sugar does to my body, what gluten does to my body. And I started to recognize how I felt when I ate those things. So now when somebody offers me pizza, I say, oh, no thanks, I don't eat gluten. It's not that I can't, there's nobody telling me I can't eat gluten anymore, but I know based on the research I've done, the inflammation it causes in my body, how it contributes to leaky gut, and I know I just don't feel good after I eat gluten, so I don't want to do that anymore, it's not worth it. And so it just makes it so much easier now because you know people offer you food all the time or it's always in front of you, and so now I just say, oh, I don't eat that. And I don't know if you can feel the difference, but to me, it is so much more empowering when I say, oh, I don't eat sugar, or I, I don't eat gluten. It's not that someone else told me I can't, but I am choosing not to. And if I really want to, I could choose to have gluten, but I will tell you that at this point in my life, 100% of the time, if I know something has gluten in it, I don't eat it because I don't want to. And so, you know, there's other foods, for example, like dairy. You know, again, I know that dairy causes some inflammation in my body. It causes, you know, a little bit of sinus congestion for me or can make me more prone to acne. And so 90% of the time, I don't eat dairy. But I also know that on the rare occasion, I will choose to eat some and that's okay because I'm not trying to follow some diet plan that somebody else gave me. And so, for me, it's just been 
I think saying I don't makes me so much more motivated to stick with and to be able to resist any kind of temptation. So I wanna give you a couple practical tips on how to kinda of use these words, I don't. Before I do that though, first I just wanna share with you that I kinda of stumbled across this in my own experience, but just probably about you know a month ago, I saw some research that Vanessa Patrick at the University of Houston did, and she studied this, and she found that people who say I don't are three times more effective at resisting temptation than if they say no. And the people who say I don't are eight times more effective at resisting temptation than if they say, I can't. So her research actually backs this up. And if you think about it, you know it's like boosting your willpower by eight times. You're making yourself eight times more likely to be able to stick with your healthy eating plan by just changing two little words. It's a pretty simple thing to change. Um, it's not always easy because sometimes our, our words, our language, our habits just get really ingrained in us. And so it takes some time to really be aware Aware of how we're talking and what we're saying but all you have to do is change those two words instead of saying I can't say I don't and you will make yourself eight times more likely to be successful at creating a new habit so I'm gonna give you some practical tips if you're finding this information helpful or if you think it would benefit somebody else I would so appreciate it if you would share this video uh, just to help me kind of spread this message with more people so I appreciate it if you can do that um, but let's talk about a couple practical tips on how to make this work. So first of all, my first piece of advice is to educate yourself. Just don't don't say, well, I'm not gonna eat gluten. I don't eat gluten, I don't eat sugar, I don't eat dairy, without knowing why. Because once you know why, and you know how something impacts your body, you will be so much more motivated to actually stick with this. I see this time and time again with my clients because part of what I do every week is educate them on different aspects of how food impacts our body and our hormones and our insulin levels. And then they can choose if they want to follow it or not. So that's the first thing is to educate yourself. The second tip is to just do one thing at a time. So again, you know, when I'm working with clients, we don't massively overhaul their diet overnight because it's so overwhelming and it makes it difficult to stick with. So instead, choose one thing that you want to change, that you want to make a statement, I don't statement about, and just make that one change for a week or two. And once you have that down, then add in something else. My third piece of advice is that this can relate to anything. You don't have to just make an I don't statement about food. It could be about exercise. You could say, I don't skip an exercise session that I planned with myself. You could say, you know, well, I'll give you an example. One thing that I've been debating about doing for myself, but I'm finding some resistance in doing this and actually committing to it is that so I like to stay up late. I like to stay up late and sleep in in the morning, but I know that I just don't feel as good if I stay up late. So I've been debating, and I think I, maybe this is my commitment. I just need to say it right here and make it public that I don't go to bed after 10.30 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. Let's not get too crazy, not on the weekends, but Sunday through Thursday, I don't go to bed after 10.30 p.m. So if it's 10.20 and I'm tempted to you know, throw an episode of The Office on Netflix, I can say no, I don't go to bed after 10.30, so I don't watch The Office at 10.20 p.m. So, you know, just making statements like that can just, it just makes you feel like you're in control, you made the decision, and it makes you so much more likely to follow through on it. So again, it could be about food, I don't eat gluten, I don't eat sugar, or it could be about any, any area of your life that you wanna create a positive habit in. And, you know, I guess what I would encourage you to do is to choose one thing. What is one thing that you want to commit to? And put it in the comments for us. You can help inspire other people and give us all ideas of different things we could try. And by making your own I don't statement, so just put something in the comment, I, I don't go to bed after 10.30 p.m. You will commit to it and it'll just be kind of that official declaration that you are committing to making a change for yourself. So I would really be curious to hear what kinds of things that you would be interested in committing to. So throw that in the comments. And you know, lastly, I just, I want to recognize that it's easy for me to say, well, just educate yourself on, you know, what would be the best way to eat for your body or just, you know, figure out how different foods affect you. 
But that can be overwhelming because there's so much information out there. And you might read one source that says, don't eat coconut oil, it's going to cause heart disease. And then another reputable source says, coconut oil is good, it's healthy, it supports weight loss. And so it's hard to know what to trust and where to look for information. And so if you are at a point where you want someone to support you through that process of wading through the information and really figuring out a plan that would work for you, then you know that's what I do with my health coaching clients. I will help you create a personalized plan that you can stick with and that feels right for you and that will work for you long term. You know, my goal is to work myself out of a job. I want to give you all all the information and empower you to make these decisions so that you can do it for the rest of your life so that you don't have to be on diets forever because I know from personal experience that that's not a fun way to live it's not it's not fun to have just to feel like you're always controlled about by food and thinking about food so anyway if you're interested at all in learning more about health coaching I'd be happy to offer you a complimentary discovery session where we can just get on the phone and talk about you know whether or not health coaching would be a good fit for you talk about your goals and see if it would be a good match so if you are interested in that you can go to christinajohnsonwellness.com forward slash apply um, it's just a couple quick questions to let me know you're interested in a discovery session and then I will get back to you and we'll find a time to chat. So if you have any other questions or concerns, please feel free to put them in the comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this topic and if you think it might be helpful for you or not. Um, also, one other thing is if you are watching this on Facebook, you can make sure that you get notifications so that you know when I go live in the future. I love having uh, people live with me here. So um, feel free. I think it's the little arrow at the top and then you can just click on get notifications. Um, the other option is if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you know when I post a new video. So I hope that you have a great week. If you have any questions, put them below and I will talk to you next week. Bye.